1969 Ludwig Special, man. The blue sparkle. Check out this kit, man. Old vintage Ludwig drum set that I'm fixing to uh, uh, rerun the edges on. I'm going to show you exactly how, step by step, my take on getting these things back to sound and beautiful again. Um, and by trying to keep the original cosmetics. Like, I don't want to change a whole lot of stuff with the angles. I just want to sharpen everything up, and um, I'm going to take you through it. I'm pretty sure it never sounded this good. Like... Perfect. You know, you could spend hours on a bearing edge and then set it down on something hard, like a screw, and it will dent the mess out of the head. You can see some of the dips and voids over the years. Um, different styles of screws that they used to use. Still holding up, man. These drums sound amazing. Uh, look at this, look at that, look at that right there where the piece, that piece is a little bit thicker than this piece. You know, they just didn't get, I mean, back then, you know, it's hard to get these things perfectly right. Uh, I'm gonna show you some really cool techniques. They got a really big dip in this slide over here. Um, it's got a real big spot where it just kind of dips down right there. A uh, big void right there too, another big void over here. Kyle actually, this is Kyle's drum kit. He actually told me he don't like this. Spin will think of it gets his hair caught in. Everything in the world gets caught in. Cord, any kind of wires. Some of the things I can tell you from the factory, just, you know, seeing that little groove right there around that bearing edge, around that, is where they ran the, with, the, with the bit that they used to cut it. Um, kind of grooved into the side of the re ring, kind of dips down right there. Pretty good bit. It's definitely gonna be some work trying to straighten some of this stuff out. You can see what I'm talking about right here. See it how it dips down a little bit right there. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to sand this on a flat surface um making sure that everything is perfectly flat before we bring it to the router so the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna go around the whole drum i'm gonna feel for any low spots or any dips or chips that would need epoxy mixed into it um so what i do is i put tape on each side before i fill it with epoxy and let the epoxy kind of almost bridge the gap so that when I go to start sanding, I can get everything at the same level at the same time. Because I'm spinning my wheels if I was to try to run them right now. You definitely got to fill all the voids first. And most of the time, you can use a two-part epoxy that you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot works fine. As long as it's a two-part uh, epoxy, I found that it gets just ridiculously hard. And there's a lot of different products you can use. I'm not going to go into that as much, but... You could just use a two-part epoxy. This here is 120 grit sandpaper, and I want to keep rocking this thing back and forth until it's 100% flat. And I'll check it periodically to see if I've got it off before we start uh, routering the edge, because you want to start off with a flat surface, always. Now, here's one issue right now that I'm taking place of. Uh, you see where they wrap the drum shell around? It's got a little void right there. And if you were to let your router go around that void, it's going to dip. So what I've done 
is I put a real thin piece of wood right here and I'll tape it around it to kind of give it almost like a bridge so it doesn't dip down. And at the end of that piece of wood, I get tape and I feather it down real gently. One reason why a lot of people are scared to run these edges is because you gotta run an out route around the outside of this. But with this wrap, you notice it's got a void right here. And if you was to try to run that around that bear, and it's gonna raise up and kind of go back down and dip down and it's not gonna be consistent. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a piece of wood around this outside of this and feather it down real gradual so that it's like comes all the way out to here instead of it's not just a sharp dip. All right, so I got a piece of real thin piece of wood pretty close right there. That way when I'm running around it, it won't dip down. And I'm gonna go and put another piece right there beside it, just a little bit of a difference. Now there's a little bit of a dip right here where the other piece kind of comes in. And I'm just gonna put a couple pieces of tape right there to kind of help feather that in. So it's not just a big dip, it's just kind of a real gradual because I don't want to take all this stuff off. And I want to kind of keep it as original as I possibly can. I'm not going to be able to use the shaper. I got to use a small router because I have to run that bearing on the actual uh, reinforcement ring. I can't have it sitting down below. Now, the router table that I'm using here is nothing really fancy, nothing special. It's adjustable from the top, so you don't have to go underneath it and raise it up and down. You can go in real, and I like this because you can go in real um, increments. You don't have to, it ain't like a whole big drop. You can just edge it up a little bit. And you want to get a bearing that's right close to the tip. Um, so basically there's zero clearance. And here is my setup right here. This is basically a piece of MDF right here um, on a homemade stand. Nothing kind of crazy. Um, this is a standard Bosch router with this little kit. I mean, literally, you can probably get set up right here for about 400 bucks. Maybe, maybe 450. You can probably get set up, you know. And um, with this setup, now you don't have to have this. You can just have a standard router table and adjust it from underneath the base. That'll work fine too. Um, but for me, I like being able to adjust it from the top side. Because once I, that way I can just kind of ease it up a little bit. Outside edges first. Um, it gives you a really good point to work into. All right, I want you to see really close right here. All right, you see how that bearing right there is just barely touching? You don't want it to touch much, if any, to run your first pass. And there's only about the thickness of maybe a dollar bill right there. You can see it. Just glue off of it. Make sure that make sure that thing right there is tight too, because that thing comes off, you're screwed. I've had that happen before, by the way. But I just want to barely, barely make sure that's like barely clearing it, and it looks like it is. I'm gonna make my first pass. Kind of right before it gets all the way to it and i know that it's touching right there so and it looks like that's going to be the lowest spot because there's a lot of inconsistencies on these old vintage drums now all right here we go contact <laughs>
See how I brought it right, almost right, almost to a point. And it may even be a point in some spots, but I really tried not to get it 100% sharp because um, I'm gonna sand all that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start it off with um, 150 and I'm gonna work it up to 400. But you can see like right here, look. See the inconsistency of that re-ring right there? Look, it's thicker right there than it is here. That's how they used to do these things. never done that before so this is good for me it's a good day <laughs> that boing the boing is so critical for whatever reason okay? <laughs> it's not doing that yeah then it's not awesome now actually i gotta put a new head on this rumble yeah i'm actually getting tones out of it that's yes Oh man, that's got a rumble. It's like, I wonder if that's how it sounded when it just got fresh off the, the line. I don't know, man. I feel like it's like they never sounded this good. It's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It, it... Yeah, they've never tuned up that easy. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, ma'am. All right, what is your name? I'm Kyle. My name's Kyle Alligator. I'm Sylvia he got a He got a studio in Tallahassee. Yeah, yeah I love Tallahassee. A recording studio, like a real deal recording studio yeah it's 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 not a i don't want to hate on bedroom guys because i was a bedroom guy like i had a bedroom <laughs> studio yeah. you know what i mean yeah there's <laughs> <laughs> much better higher ceilings <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow yeah dude oh my god yes yeah dude that's not even really tuned that great. <laughs> and it's okay, but I could do, I mean, that's just old heads, you know? Wow. And that's a two ply on the bottom. Mm. So that's not as much sustain as Oh wow, it's a two ply. Yeah, because. Dang. Which is a noticeable amount of sustain, but like with a one ply on the bottom, it's gonna be even more. I think it'd be a good idea to let you know that that's when that edge was resurfaced another 50 years from now. Oh, right. You know, yeah. it'd be like, Whoever has it will know that. So, um, hey, what's up? I'm Kyle Allegood. I manage uh, Gasoline Alley Recording Studio in uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, the place was built in 1977. It looks like a 70s recording studio. Like, you, you walk in and you should expect to see someone with an afro and a cigarette coming around the corner. It's great. Uh, we're all digital. 24-track, um, simultaneous. Uh, uh, we've got three drum kits, two of which are in fantastic shape now, thanks to Mr. Michael Outlaw himself. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're in the Tallahassee area and you're looking for a place where you can record your band live, we can do, you know, I've had like full choirs and drums and everything in there at the same time. And then we've done singer songwriter stuff or country bands, whatever, you know, we got the space, come check us out. We're on Facebook uh, at Gasoline Alley Studios or recording, I can never remember, but you know, Gasoline Alley, 70s, you'll find us, no big deal. But uh, yeah, man, um, and also you guys need to, to not sleep on Outlaw drums because, uh, well, I didn't sleep on them, but this is the first time I've played any, and the toms and the kicks and the snares are just fantastic, super punchy. We're probably gonna have to buy a snare at least for the studio. I feel like, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thanks for checking us out, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs>
I know one person's kind of better going to do that. I would have never think you're gonna put those two kits in that car though, man. I know. Well, you got to figure it out like a science. Can I drive out straight? Yeah, look. Ahead? When you drive, kind of cut to the right a little bit. See where that patch is real green right yeah, there? That's your safety thing. Yeah. So just kind of go around that little house and just drive to the right. Steer slow. 